I'm giving this talk because of a rat. This is Sniffles. <laughs> she was my classroom pet in third grade. Each weekend, my classmates would take turns to bring her home, to feed her, give her water, and to entertain her. On my turn, I was so excited. As soon as we brought her home, I let her play on my bed. But I noticed that she was limping around. So I picked her up, and I felt the arm that she was limping on, and I noticed a lump. It was large, about six centimeters in diameter, hard, immovable, and it seemed to be underneath the skin but above the muscle. What could it be? OK, well, could it be a cyst? No, no, it's not movable. Could it be an abscess? No, it doesn't seem to hurt her when I touch it. Could it be a tumor? Maybe. That weekend, I was plagued by these questions about Sniffles' mysterious lump. So I did a lot of research, and I concluded that Sniffles had breast cancer. My curiosity about Sniffles' lump initiated or infested my mind for the last 10 years, shaping a unique relationship between me and cancer. Let me explain this. So after Sniffles, my grandfather was diagnosed with advanced gastric cancer and given three weeks to live. Then, my father was diagnosed with stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And then during my dad's recovery, and all within two weeks, my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer, my grandmother, a cancer survivor, died, and I was diagnosed with a thankfully benign breast tumor myself. So, if we're counting sniffles in my benign tumor, that's six cancer-related instances in my immediate family alone. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with so much uncertainty in such a short amount of time? We all know pain in some form. It can be caused by an irrational storm out the do door, harsh words that were said, or even words that were left unsaid. It can be due to the failure of a research project or the end to a meaningful relationship. These emotions can be intense and oftentimes paralyzing. Something like losing a loved one can make us feel like nothing matters in the world, like there's no beauty left. Loss and pain can drain our ability to have fun, to feel wonder, or to feel anything for that matter. These emotions can be debilitating, but they can also be instructive. Trauma is important because it brings with it meaning and purpose. Trauma will create wounds and time will heal them, but this healing is never completely restorative without meaning and purpose. Although I didn't know it at the time, Sniffles' tumor taught me to turn emotional burden into action. So after I informally diagnosed Sniffles with breast cancer, we decided to take her to the vet. The vet sat me down, sighed, and told me that Sniffles did have cancer, and the only chance of her survival would mean removing the tumor. I sat silent, processing, quickly becoming overwhelmed with what could only be described as excitement. And without a, be without a beat, I even asked, can I keep the tumor? My reaction, though seemingly odd, felt completely natural to me. I knew that I was going to be losing sniffles, but something about me wanted to keep that tumor, and I don't know why. Something about it fascinated me, and I wanted to learn more. My experience playing diagnostician to sniffles sparked an interest in cancer, something that I kept wanted to keep with me in the form of a tumor, long after her death, essentially a souvenir of her life. But I decided to accept the inevitable of losing sniffles and to find purpose. Little did I know that deciding to keep that tumor set me on a lifelong path that has made me who I am today. It was the first step in my journey to dedicate what has been my life up to now, to understand cancer. So, after sniffles, my grandfather was diagnosed with gastric cancer and given three weeks to live. I begged to go to every doctor's appointment with him, and I would badger the doctors with questions like, what do RBC and LDL mean on these blood reports? Does Grandad have the CDH1 gene? Why is Grandad going to lose his hair? But as a 12-year-old, I couldn't get as involved as I wanted to. So I found alternative methods of helping Grandad. The one thing that the oncologist did say that I could do to help Grandad would be, would be to record his vitals. So each hour he was in treatment, I would update a little spreadsheet. Pulse, 90 beats per minute. Body temperature, 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Blood pressure, 128 over 80. Pain level, 2. Recording Granddad's vitals meant much more to me than simply graphing numbers, though. Granddad helped me so much throughout my life, from teaching me how to ballroom dance to teaching me how to do math quickly in my head. As some of, us, some of you may know who have taken care of a loved one, it felt rewarding to not only help him as a grand, granddaughter, but as a nurse, too. This was Granddad and I. I reacted even more oddly when my father was diagnosed. In my freshman year of high school, my mom, dad, and I were sitting in our living room when my dad broke the news. He said, I have stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. In my head, I kept repeating the sentence, my dad has cancer, my dad has cancer, over and over to settle the shock. And it did rather quickly. I didn't really feel that hurt. I didn't feel any shock. I just felt kind of normal. But I did want to find a way to help my dad. So I started simply. No one likes the thought of being in hospital. It can be scary, it can be oppressive. So I started calling the hospital chemo club, a, a new age bar where a very group, select group of people get to have chemotherapy cocktails 24-7. Chemotherapy cocktails have the reverse of effect of alcohol, though, where instead of feeling temporarily buzzed than sick after you do with alcohol, with chemo cocktails, you feel really, 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 really sick, but then buzzed years on after your visit. How great. I knew that turning the hospital from an oppressive, scary environment into a supportive one through humor was an essential part of his healing process. So I made it my mission to do just that. In addition to chemo club, I was still managing other responsibilities. During my high school years, I would go to school, go home, or go visit my dad at chemo club, and then go home and do homework, all with the complicated slew of emotions that come with a cancer diagnosis. But once again, I wasn't concerned about the future. I didn't, although we didn't know what was going to happen to my dad, I wasn't scared, I wasn't shocked, and I wasn't paralyzed. I reacted even more oddly when my mother and I were diagnosed. In the past, cancer no longer felt like an emotional burden, but rather my purpose. With each cancer diagnosis, it became less of a traumatic moment and more of a simple problem requiring a creative solution one that I always had an active role to play in. When Sniffles was diagnosed, I did what I could. I acted as a young diagnostician, got her tumor removed, and then used that experience to cultivate an interest. When my grandfather was diagnosed, I did what I could. Even though I was still young, I decided that I wanted to act as his nurse. When my father was diagnosed, I responded by creating chemo club and by advocating for him during his treatment. But then when my mother and I were diagnosed, I could and I did a lot more. I became a cancer researcher before I could even set foot in the lab. In, high, in my dealings with cancer and teenage acne of all things, I found that the main ingredient of my face wash, East Indian sandwich oil, could be a treatment for many different diseases, most notably gastric cancer and breast cancer. These experiences had led me to things that I never could have dreamed of happening before such as being invited by President Obama to the White House, being interviewed by Bill Nye the Science Guy, and discussing my research with Joe Biden. But in thinking of a way that I respond to traumatic events, because I'm a science major and tend to think of things in sciencey terms, I turn towards physics. The second law of thermodynamics states that energy transformation increases disorder of a system and results in both usable and unusable energy. Traumatic experiences act in a similar way. They cause an immense amount of chaos in our lives, seemingly stirring everything up. But they also give us an invisible choice, to be paralyzed or to not be paralyzed by trauma, or, in physics terms, to harness usable or unusable energy. So, though sad, trauma is extremely important. Do not let trauma paralyze you. You don't have to let it. If you just choose to, you can harness trauma, take advantage of it, Give it purpose in your life and grow from this purpose. You just never know where it could take you.